was not born here. I was born in Italy and raised uh, on the Mexican border, uh, first in Nogales and then in Tucson. Uh, but for all intensive purposes, I am American. You know, I was raised by a single mother who raised me very much with American principles, and I had an example of what it meant to reinvent yourself and um, to kind of, you know, have a blank slate and, and, and create the world that you want to be in. And I feel like those are very American principles. So I think that what I, what I did have, because I grew up on a border, because I grew up, you know, speaking different languages, is I had a desire to, to constantly um, interact with different cultures and find ways to bring that into the musical world and the artistic world um, that I inhabited. And so that kind of, uh, if you want to say openness or, or desire to interact with other cultures definitely comes, I think, from immigrating to this country at a young age and having, you know, being a new American. Holy flesh tells a story for me at the beginning of my compositional career was to secure what I felt at that moment was the best training I could possibly get. And I definitely felt that, um, you know, the, teacher as I the teachers I studied with, uh, the classes that I took prepared me uh, for the compositional life that I wanted to have uh, in terms of technique, uh, in terms of, you know, exposure to great performers, and, and just by nature of it being in New York. And so it felt like the perfect place while I was there. However, it was there that I started the non, you know, the nonprofit I still direct to this day. I co-founded it in 1999 while I was a student because I was acutely aware um, that it would be very difficult for me as a composer when I graduated. And those years in between when you graduate and when you're, you know, considered I mean, those emerging years before you're considered an established composer, which can be really 10 to 20 years, are extraordinarily difficult. And I wanted to be able to kind of create some kind of next steps and some kind of organizational process that would help me uh, bridge those years and do it with some kind of grace. composer draws their inspiration from many different places and every composer most likely either teaches or mentors or directs an ensemble or conducts and you see this pretty regularly amongst all our peers. So for me the idea of producing and mentoring feels like a very natural extension of who I am and it never felt like I needed to explain that or hide it or shy away from it uh, because these were natural properties that I wanted to develop and had, it felt really natural to, you know, to mix them into, into my compositional life, into my life as an artist. Um, you know, I like to say that in, in order to be a 21st century artist, nowadays, of course, you have to have talent, but you also have to have some kind of a mix of entrepreneurship and activism and a, and a desire to educate. 
But more and more, I think that it's not that you have to have all these properties because everybody's different, but you do have to have um, some sense of, of consciousness in terms of your musical ecology, your, your peers, uh, and, how, and what you can do to, to help affect your surroundings. Yeah.